Welcome back to my sewing room. I'm so excited that my prim sew along starts in just a few days. And so today I thought I'd show you how I prepare the first block in the prim quilt for applique. Now I'm using my prim set of Sew Simple Shapes and my new prim fabric. You can find all of the sew along information on my blog and in the sew along guide. Okay, I've got all of my block one shapes traced and ready to sew. But first I wanna tell you about the shape K27 because we need to do something a little bit special for it. This shape is used for several things throughout the quilt, but for the block one, it's used for the beehive door. So what you're gonna do for that is just trace it around onto your interfacing like you normally do. But on that second dotted line, you're gonna mark each side and then go ahead and flip your shape over so you've got a straight edge and just trace across there. Okay, so once you've got it traced like this, that's your new sewing line and you'll just sew all around that shape right there for the door. So you can see that I've sewn this piece already and I've just trimmed off the bottom and then trim around a quarter of an inch and then we'll have that shape for the beehive door. Okay, I'm gonna go through this pile and grab my star shape and my flower shape and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I sew them, trim them and shape them. So I'm gonna put them with their coordinating fabric and just run them through the machine. Okay, so I sew with my trace interfacing right side up and my fabric piece right side up and sew directly on the line. And at the end, I just over sew about an inch and that locks in my stitch. I do not shorten my stitch length, I just use a regular length. Okay, now for the flower. So through the magic of editing, both the star and the flower are sewn and trimmed. You can go ahead and trim off a little bit of the points on the star and then I just go around and do one clip in each cleavage of the star. If you don't do that, it won't lie flat. I do the same thing for the cleavage in each flower. It's just one clip right to the thread and not into the thread. Okay, so I either use scissors or a seam ripper to do the first cut on the back, making sure that I don't cut through the fabric. And then I go ahead and finish cutting so there's an X on the back of each piece. Now it's time to turn them right side out and I just do it gently so that I'm not tearing anything. And it looks really strange when I first turn them. But remember, the clover turner is your best friend when it comes to shaping your pieces. I just start shaping by pushing out one point at a time. And when I say pushing, I'm doing it very gently. And I turn my clover turner sideways kind of and push those points out and I'm trying to only push on the fabric and trying to remember that I'm never gonna get a perfect point just pushing it out the best that I can. Try not to fuss about this star too much. Remember, it's supposed to have a primitive look and you'll be surprised what it looks like after you do the pressing. Okay, I've got all eight points of the star pushed out and now I'm gonna do the same thing with the flower. Now this flower might be a little bit tricky, you think, because it has those long, narrow petals. But I just turn them and I just push out the points on each side of each petal and it's gonna work out just great when we press it. Okay, they're both shaped, now it's time to iron. Okay, so with the flower, I just press one petal at a time. And I just kind of tuck the interfacing underneath in the corners as I go along. I just kind of work with each petal as I go along. And as long as each petal is flat, then it's all gonna work out at the end. And I just tuck my interfacing in and also I can turn it over and 
tuck the interfacing in and just use the tip of my iron to press that as well. Now keep in mind that I'm using a dry iron. I don't use any steam. I don't wanna shrink the fabric or the interfacing. Okay, the flower looks great. Let's set it aside to cool and I'm gonna do the star. I do the star just the same. I start with the points and then I can kind of press from the center out until it's flat and I like how it turned out too. And once again, through the magic of editing, I have all of my pieces sewn and trimmed. And these pieces that I'm picking up now are the ones that need to be clipped. So inner curves and cleavages just need to be clipped. So you've got the little inner curve in the flag piece. You just do a few clips, the cleavage in the heart, and then the inner curves in the larger flag piece. You don't have to do those too close together, just a few clips here and there. Okay, now to turn and shape. I'm back over to my large ironing surface and I've got all of my pieces ready to go. And I wanted to talk to you about the bias strips. For the flagpole, it's just a straight strip run through the half inch bias tape maker. You wanna press each end under and it should measure 14 inches long. Now this is how I set up my flag and the stripes that go on it. Now we cut the white stripes on the bias because they're curved and I'll show you how I press the curves into those. The first thing I do is spray them a little with water or you could add starch in your water as well. I usually have half water, half starch. And I just don't really want to saturate the strip, but I do want to get it wet so that it will hold its shape. Before running it through the half inch bias tape maker, I do put my iron on the end so that I can dry that and make it flat so that I can just push it through the end. And then as I'm pulling it, I'm following my iron along the maker and I'm just curving it as I go. And that easily presses into a curve. Now I do it the exact same way for the flower stems. These are cut 5 eighths of an inch wide on the bias because they're curved and I run them through the quarter inch bias tape maker and I just need to make one great big curve per stem. Now I'm going to get two flower stems for the block out of this one piece. I cut each about six and a half inches long and I press one end under so that that raw edge will be finished. The stems curve different directions so I can press them that way if I'd like. It's really easy because it's cut on the bias. I can repress over and over to make them as curvy as I want. Okay, now to start setting up the block. I'll put my finished block here for reference and I have my background piece laid on a design board and what I'm going to do is prepare the flag first by just pinning into the design board. I'm just gluing the blue part of the flag down in the middle but not all the way to the edges because I want to be able to tuck the ends of the white stripes underneath. Now when I'm laying out my white stripes I just kind of want to use the curve on the flag piece itself to follow with the curve on the stripes. I try to make the stripes look as evenly spaced and symmetrical as I can. But remember, there's no such thing as perfection. Just have fun with it, play with it, and when you get it how you like how it looks, pin it into place for glue basting. Now keep in mind, it may look like I'm using a lot of glue, but I'm not. I'm just using a little bit, and I am not gluing to the background block fabric. I'm just gluing to the flag piece itself. 
So now I'm going to let that glue dry for a minute and I want to show you that I pre-glued the flowers together and the star center together and I went ahead and did the beehive as well. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier when you're preparing and pin basting to have different sections glued together like this. Okay, I've got my flagpole. Remember it's 14 inches long and each end is pressed under. I'm going to go ahead and take the pins out of the flag and then this is what I'm going to do with the raw edges of the stripes that I trimmed off. I'm simply going to place a little bit of glue on those raw edges and turn them over and glue to the back. Okay, I'm going to start by pinning my flagpole a couple of inches in from the left. And I just want to pin it straight and then put the flag on top. I'm going to overlap the flag into the pole a little bit. In my first block, I didn't do that as much, so I thought I would do that with this one. Now the beehive is next, and remember you've got to leave a little bit of room for those antenna when you embroider. So before I do anything else, I want to go ahead and place the flower that's on the right side over and measure about 14 inches from the flagpole to the outside of the flower. And if I go ahead and place the flowers first, then I know I can put the star over by the flag and my design is coming together and it's not growing too big. Now each step of the way, I'm always using the 16 and a half inch trim it ruler and looking inside that window to make sure that my pieces stay within it. Once I think the placement is good, then I go ahead and start pinning down each applique piece and the stems as well. I give it one last look with the ruler and then I continue pinning everything so that I can glue. Now keep in mind that this glue is very forgiving. You can reposition it. You can gently pull off any applique piece and reposition it if needed. But I think this looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna keep going. Now use a light box to trace the antenna on and use the pattern in the sew along guide and go ahead and do a back stitch at the same time you're doing applique. After your embroidery and applique is complete, you're gonna press your block from the back and then you're gonna use the trim it ruler to trim it to 16 and a half inches square so that it will fit into the quilt. The Prim Sew Along starts on my blog this Monday, August 24th. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and next week I'll have a new blog in the Sew Your Stash series. Chat with you later.